Hey everybody, this is Jaden Storm coming at you Team Shadow Strike, and I have a new video and new deck profile for you guys. Um, I, I, you know, ahead of time, I'm just gonna say, um, Siren Frost, shout out to you real quick. You are probably gonna be. She's she's probably gonna be laughing, and you know, I, I can I can't wait to read what she says because the. This is, um, I decided to finally crack and build the build that was really popular in Japan and is still doing very well over there. Um, but this version of Royal Paladin, it, it accompanies all of the support that Royal Paladin has ever got and makes, in my opinion, probably the best deck Royal Paladin has ever had. Um, it accompanies Seekers, it accompanies... Uh, the new support, and it even accompanies the archetype that I hate the most and will always hate um, above, you know, almost everything is Jewel Knight. And unfortunately, um, there are a lot of, there are quite a few Jewel Knights in here because of one card that is grossly overpriced, but we will get there when I, when I get to it. This deck is really really consistent because it pushes huge numbers as early as turn two. Um, but it is extremely consistent. I've already play tested this a lot at my locals and the deck is crazy good. It's I've play tested it against um, the cross. I've play tested against other Royal Paladin decks. I've play tested against Gear Chronicle. Um, all the decks out there right now that are considered top decks, this deck can hang with it. And not only hang with it, it pushes huge numbers. Um, it even, um, I've even test played it against the new Dimensional Police stuff. This deck is crazy good. Um, and trust me, it it hurts me inside to, I, that I had to hunt down Jewel Knight cards. It really does. So Siren Frost is probably, you know, rubbing her hands together going, <laughs> but, um, you know, by the end of this deck profile, she'll probably wreck every piece of furniture in her living room, but I got to admit, this deck is good, guys. It, it It is good. It is crazy good. So, you know, but anyway, let's just jump straight into this deck profile. So, so for the starting Vanguard, I run starting legend Ambrosius. Now I have been hunting this card forever because it is extremely hard to find because unless you bought the Mega Trial deck that came out with Sanctuary Guard Dragon, that was the only way to get this card. Now, what this would be is the Royal Paladin Grade 3 Searcher, but because Japan hates us, we still haven't gotten that card over in the English meta, and to be honest, I don't know when the fuck we're supposed to get it. Um, but um, that's what this would be if we had it. But it's not, so I'm going with this. Now, there are plenty of options that you can use if you don't have this because not a lot of people do. You can use um, Advanced Party Seeker File, because you can shove this in the soul and search for a Blaster Blade Seeker, and it counts for the, um, uh, when you perform your Sing Saver Legion. You can use it, you can use the one from the G Trial deck that lets you call out a Grade 2 on Generation Break 1, or you can even use the one Jewel Knight, uh, what's her name, uh, Jewel Knight Slutty uh, something, uh, when you shove her in the soul, you can give Jewel Knights, two Jewel Knights plus 3k. But, to be honest, um, th th to be honest, I don't want to play that card, for one, because I'm at my limit. I will not put any more Jewel Knights in this deck, period. Um, <laughs> but, also, you cannot guarantee that you'll have them, so to, in my honest opinion, and plus, this gives you at least a discard outlet, because what this guy lets you do is you literally shove him in the soul, you get to discard one and draw a card. Um, so, and it's, uh, you know, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is what I was using beforehand, and this is good, but it costs a Counter Blast, and you really want to save your Counter Blast for everything else. So, you can kind of go all over the place with your starter, so, and, but I'm going with, uh, Ambrosius, so. Okay, here we go. So... <clears throat> Four Rochelle and four Stinger. So eight Jewel Knight crits. This may not make sense to you at first, but it will shortly. I'm still playing Margol because you are playing Sing Saver and you want to be able to help your soul if you can. And then I'm playing four Jewel Knight heal triggers. If I was going to play the Jewel Knights, I was going to play as many of them that I can at least say are cute. And I will admit, Helmy is cute. So eight crit, four draw, four heal, but. 
the reason I'm playing the Jewel Knight triggers will become apparent pretty shortly. So, <clears throat> grade ones. Four, Holy Shine, uh, Holy Knight Guardian. Now, in Japan, for the Ultimile Sing Saber variants that are running all over the spot, all over the place, um, some people like to play the Jewel Knight Perfect Guard, the Jewel Knight Assault. I do not like that because this deck counterblasts so much. I think you need this. Um, but that's my opinion because he, I want unflipping outlets because I am using Sing Saber, um, and plus I don't own any I don't own any Jewel Knight Perfect Guards. Um, the Jewel Knight Perfect Guards that I did pull I gave away, <laughs> so I uh, I just uh, and plus and, and to be real honest I want the unflipping. That's just me. Um, then I play four copies of Laurel Knight Sicilis. This is the Stride enable. This is the Stride uh, Enabler Grade One or whatever you choose to call it. Stride Boosters I've heard them called. Um, when this unit is placed on the rear guard. You can reveal a grade 3 in your hand, search out for a grade 3 with Ultimile and its card name, put it into your hand, and then discard a card. And when you discard this from your hand when paying the cost for stride, he counts as a grade 3. So, you want to max out on this so we can take full advantage of our G deck. So, And then here comes more of the Jewel Knights. Three copies of Stinging Jewel Knight. Shelly, if you have... Three or more Jewel Knights on the board, um, she can swing for 10. Worst 10k attacker ever. Um, and then three Prismi. Um, Prismi, if there's three Jewel Knights out, you can discard a card and draw a card. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to drop her and put in a fourth Prismi. Um, see, I have a theory. All the animals that are Jewel Knights, they did not choose to be Jewel Knights by choice, they were forced into slavery to be a Jewel Knight. So, <laughs> that's poking fun again at Siren Frost. But anyway, um, if if there was another animal, grade one, because I love animals, then I would do that, just because I, I'm, I'm a huge animal lover. And plus, um, white leopards and white tigers are two of my favorite. Um, so, but to be real honest, you... I will use this as a 10k attacker if it's like literally my last option, but I prefer, because a lot of people were playing 4 Shelly and only 2 Prismi, I like having the 3rd Prismi, but that's just me. So, grade 2s, and here's where you'll see all this Jewel Knight stuff. First is we're going to talk about Blaster Blade Seeker. Now there are some people who was playing a build similar to mine, but... They were playing four Blaster Blade Seekers, and this was the people in Japan, and I don't understand why you would play more than three, because you're not going... Blaster Blade Seeker is good, because you can nuke a front row, but to be real honest, you don't need four. I mean, there are other grade twos I'd rather play, because I play four different grade twos in this deck. So I think three Blaster Blade Seeker is fine, and of course we have the gorgeous three Legion Rare versions. Now the card that is so grossly overpriced. Four copies of Jewel Knight Sword Me. This is the reason that I decided to put this deck together. Um, I, um, I wasn't going to build this variant because I do not like Jewel Knights. And um, I had a friend who said, look, buy the Sword Me's, and if you don't like them, I'll buy them off you. The playset for $120. And that sounds gross, and it really is. I have seen just one of these cards, guys, sell for $38. They sell, on average, between $25 and $35 a piece. Um, and that's because you can only get this as a promo in G1, and you aren't even guaranteed it. So the only way to get this card is if you opened up multiple boxes of G1 and just got lucky. So... Um, and the card that he, he that Sword Me mates with, I'm sorry, it's terrible. That I mean, this card is the reason. And this card, honestly, is the whole reason I decided to build the deck. Just because I will admit, despite it being a Jewel Knight, I love the card's artwork. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, but um, pretty much when she's <clears throat> um, placed on the rear guard, you may E-Special Counter Blast one Jewel Knight. That's why we play Jewel Knight Triggers, so they pop up in the drop zone for you to be able to pay the cost. And then you may Superior Call 
a Jewel Knight Grade 1 to the field. So you can get a booster to put directly behind him, or you don't have to put... The beauty of this card is you don't have to put it behind this Swordman. You can put it behind your Vanguard or your other rear guard, or move it to the front. You can. It kind of gives you a, a toolbox option. And what's also really nice about this card, and the reason this card has been so popular, is you don't have to have a Jewel Knight Vanguard. You just have to have a... Jewel Knight Counterblast, and that's it. And it, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty stupid. I will admit. Um, but um, I've won more games with this deck than I've lost because you can rush the hell out of your opponent so fast that they can't counter it um, at times. But um, this card is the whole reason I decided to put this deck together. And you wouldn't think hunting down these criticals would be eat, would be hard, but it took me forever and calling in a favor from my friend Ryan to send them to me, so I had them. As well as the the these, because I did not keep any of my Jewel Knight stuff, but I guess that's... I guess it came back to bite me in the ass, so that's... That's, I guess, just, you know... I guess what I deserved, but anyway, I still, I'm never going to build Jewel Knights as a deck. What I honestly see Jewel Knights are good at now, and I will say this about them, Siren, and I think I've told you this before, Jewel Knights, in my opinion, they, this card right here is the best card Jewel Knights has, has ever had, period, and it's also one of the top 10 cards that Royal Paladin has, um, probably top five even, because I think the Jewel Knights, honestly, now, what from what I, from, because it's forced me to look at them differently since I have been playtesting this deck and I really enjoy playing it, is that I think the Jewel Knights, they weren't meant to be a tier one deck by themselves. I think they were meant to be put in other decks and make that deck good. Um, and I think that's what um, they do here. So um, I have a newfound respect for Jewel Knight Siren. Um, I still am not a fan of them, but I at least have a newfound respect for them. And, um, I'm, I, <laughs> just because of this card, it has made me look at them differently. So, um, this doesn't change anything the day that when I do finally get to have a, have a, get, have a match with you. Um, I want you to use your Jewel Knights and I swear I'm going to use the best Kagura deck that I have at that time and I'm going to beat you with it. But, um... I will admit, um, to all the Jewel Knight players out there, um, if I ever offended you by talking down to the Jewel Knights, I have a new, I, I have a newfound respect for him because of this card. Moving on, though, we play three Knight of Fragments. Um, Knight of Fragment, if you have, uh, Generation Break 1, if you have two Grade 2s on the field, which is not hard to do, um, he swings for 11k, and if his attack hits a Vanguard, you may Soul Charge 1 and Unflip 1. So that's, both of those effects are good for your Sing Saber. And then for the last grade two is we play two Knight of Twin Sword. You do not, um, that, th this is pretty much all the room you have. Um, if you want, you can drop a, you can drop one Sword Me and play another Knight of Fragment. You can go, you can drop a Sword Me and play a third Knight of Twin Sword, which I would advise against. But to me, this seems like the best grade two lineup. Um, so... <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty much whatever you want, but I will tell you guys, if you wanted to build this deck, it was it's going to cost you a little bit. Now, obviously, you'd save some money by not playing Legion Rares. Those are just ones that I have, and the, actually, I only have four Legion Rare Blaster Blade Seekers, but the other Legion Rare Blaster Blade I have is the one that went with Alfred. Um, but literally, a playset of this card is going to cost you probably anywhere from... 90 to 120 dollars it just depends on what uh they want for them so this deck is pretty expensive to build um but <clears throat> it's uh it's extremely good <laughs> so for grade threes i play three copies of blue sky knight alto mile um he's really good um really good at it and in fact out of the three heartbreakers um, from the Gear Chronicle Royal Paladin Neo Nectar deck, you could even make a case that he's the best one. Um, so anyway, Ultimile skill is Generation Break 2. During your turn, all units in your front row gain 5k, which includes himself. So basically, if this was your front line, plus 5k to all three. So, And then his Heartbreak skill is during your turn, when, you're, when your G unit strides, you may pay the cost, which is Counterblast 1. If you do, choose up to two cards from your hand, call them to separate rear guards, then choose up to two rear units on the field, and those units get plus 5k. So let me clear something up, because this has been very... Uh, this has come out a lot, and um, 
you don't have to call any units from your hand to get the 5k. And if you do call two units, those two units do not have to be the units that you target. It It's two different effects. It gives you the option to call two more units, and then it gives you the option to give 5k to two units. So, um, And then obviously for the last grade three is um, four copies of Sing Seeker Sing Saber Dragon. I'm sorry, I call it Sing Saber um, because that's his name. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway... Um, we all know what Sing Saber does. Um, he legions with Blaster Blade Seeker. Um, at the end of the attack, um, at the end of the attack, if he was in Legion, um, you may counter blast two, soul blast three, and discard two cards and take another Sing Saber from your deck and superior ride it, and then Legion with a Blaster Blade from the soul. Um, and then whenever he attacks a Vanguard, he gets plus 2k. So honestly, in the early stages of the game, you're probably just going to go straight into Sing Saber and just beat your opponent down with that 22k attack. And then when you're ready to use Sing Saber's skill, um, you can use it. Or if you want, you can ride Ultimile first and then go to Sing Saber when you're ready to finish. But th th that's why this deck is so good, is that you c you have options of what to do. And I want to get the 4th Legion or Sing Saber, so I have a set. But anyway, um, this deck is extremely consistent. So um, let me go into the G deck real quick, and then I will show you a couple of combos that make this deck really dumb. So the G deck is still for um, Shrouded Divine Knight Galblade. Um, whenever his attack hits a Vanguard, um, you may superior call a grade 2 or higher unit from your deck. The reason I don't put Atmos in here, at most I would put one Atmos, is because it costs a Counter Blast, and you want to save your Counter Blast for this deck. That is crucial. So honestly, I think I would still stick with 4 Galblade. But um, the G unit that you're going to go into usually to finish the game is 4 Holy Dragon, uh, Saint Blow Dragon. And Saint Blow Dragon is really stupid. <laughs> Saint Blow Dragon's effect is um, stride, obviously, and just flip a copy over of Saint Blow face up. You don't have to counter blast for Saint Blow at all, and that's what's really stupid. Um, this unit get if you flip over a copy, this unit gets plus three thousand for each of your rear guards until the end of turn. So if you have a full field, she goes. It goes from twenty six plus fifteen. That'd be 39. So it goes from it goes from 26. That'd be no. Hang on. If you if you have a full field, okay, guys. I'm gonna just whip out my calculator because I am terrible at math. Okay. So if you this strides on top of Sing Saver or Ultima, it goes to 26. If you have a full field, 3,000 for every rear guard. That's five. So three times five is 15. It goes to 41k by itself before it's even being boosted. And also, if you have two or more cards face up in your G zone, if I'm remembering this right, yes, if you have two or more cards face up in your G zone and you have two or, and you have, uh, the number of rear guards you have is two or more, he gets plus one critical. So if you have a full field and two cards face up in your G zone and you flipped a copy of him face up, he'll be 41k plus a critical before you even boost it. So if you have a 7k boost behind it, that's 48,000 plus a crit. So if your opponent doesn't have a perfect guard, they're 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 fucked. Um, or the most they might be able to put up to defend themselves is maybe one. And, you know, that's pretty scary with a triple drive. So anyway... So let me show you what makes this deck really stupid. So let's say our field looked something like... Let's say our field looks something like... Um, this. Um, okay, let's say first turn we just rode and did that. And then let's say our opponent attacked us and... Um, they let's say they hit a critical trigger because this has happened to me. Let's say we and they I flip over and they damage me at like this. And let's say these were the cards that went into the damage zone. Turn two, ride. And let's just say for some miracle you have two sword means in your hand. Call. Counterblast one for each of them. They're both jewel knights. Superior call. Superior call. 
This is your turn two, and their turn one, they just attacked you with a grade one and somehow got a critical, okay? Um, now they have three attacks to deal with. So, Vanguard, so let's say you hit a crit. If you hit a critical, and they don't block it, crit to Blaster Blade, power to one of these sword mees. So now, even if they trigger on either one of those triggers, let's say they get one and go to 12, they still have a 16 and a 21k attack to deal with. If they don't trigger at all, and they just take two damage, and no triggers pop up at all, 21, 16. And if they're at 7, that is 15k and 20k just to guard it. So this power from early game rush is why that I was, I've was i decided to crack and build this deck. Just because Sword Me applies insane amount of pressure. Okay, now let's say, let's say our field looks something like... Let's say our field looks something like, let's say we're on Alto Mile, not Sing Saber. Um, let's say our field just looks, say we have a Knight of Fragment here. Or, you know what, no, let's say, um, let's say this is um, all we have, and we have, say, no, wait, where's not a fragment? Okay, let's say this is what we have, okay? And let's say this turn we, do, we chose to stride, okay? And say we had a Knight of Twin Sword in our hand, and we had, we called the 7k boost behind it, so let's say this is what our field looked like. Attack for 11, okay? Then after that, we can go 16 to their Vanguard, activate Knight of Twin Swords skill, which allows us to call a grade 2 or higher from the deck, or a grade 2 superior call. Skill, E-Special Counter Blast, a Jewel Knight. Superior call, okay? And then let's say Vanguard attacks for 30,000. Let's say they guard to try and stop you, and you hit, and you get through. Superior call. Knight of Twin Swords would retire. Skill of Sword Me, Counter Blast, and Superior Call, another one from the deck. Now, they they have two more attacks to deal with after they've already had to deal with, they already had to deal with one, two, three, four, five. And, you're, and you triple drive. So say if you got two triggers and you put it all on this one. You can go 16 at a rear guard and then you can go 26 again at the vanguard. That's why this deck is so crazy is just because Sword Me alone makes this deck so freaking rush heavy that it there's a lot of decks that just cannot deal with it. Um, so <laughs> um, I, I got to admit guys, this Sword Me deck it may it, it it's at least made me look at Jewel Knights it, 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 with a more positive look because Sword Me alone has made um, um, Jewel Knight decks stupid. Um, you know, I think it works best in um, this version of the deck. I don't think it would work good in a uh, just a pure Jewel Knight deck. And the reason for that is, is again, not just because I don't like Jewel Knights. Um, let me finish picking up my stuff here. <laughs> Um, do, 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 The reason for that is, is because of Sing Saber. Now, the reason I say Sing Saber is Sing Saber is so important to Royal Paladins because there's something really special about him. The cards that you discard, Soul Blast, and Counter Blast do not have to be Seekers. Just... Blaster Blade Seeker. That is the only ruling. I mean, not ruling. That is the only um, uh, that's the only regulation that you must meet in order to get Sing Saber off. Sing Saber can be splashed in any Royal Paladin deck, and the reason this is better, in my opinion, even better than that that Jewel Knight stride that mates with Sword Me that I really don't think is that great, to be honest with you, because it gets you multiple twin drives and multiple attacks, and Sing Saber is just really mean and hard to deal with, especially in the end game. and if your opponent only has five cards in their hand and they're at five damage, you know they're going to have to take at least one Sing Saber attack, and that is a huge um, plus. Um, but, um... It's it's just um, it's just really really hard for some decks to deal with, um, but uh, 
I will admit, uh, this deck it is uh, <laughs> it is really crazy because it's uh, <laughs> um, there. There's a lot of decks that just cannot deal with the sheer power this uh, deck can push out, and I and I see why. I, I see why this uh, deck did um, monstrously good in Japan because it's it pushes out so much power in the early stage that it's hard for your opponent to deal with it. So in a, essentially it it takes cards that that are considered maybe B cards and it uh hope you like that that I've worked out but it it takes things that might be considered um, second-rate cards, and I don't mean that as an insult, because to be real honest, I still don't... I think Jewel Knights would have been so much better if they would have given them a 10k attacker that just said, when this unit attacks, if your Vanguard has Jewel Knight in its name, this unit gets plus 3k, and the same thing for its 12k attacker. You know, and you could have kept Prismy the way Prismy is, but to have their 10k and 12k attackers do that, I think that really hurt them. Um, but the fact that they gave them Sword Me, that gives them a huge boost to pair them with Sing Saver with the new strides, it gives the deck so much of a boost that it makes it um, insane. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope um, you enjoyed this deck profile. Um, you know... Um, Siren, um, you know, I, I know I've, ta I've talked about you a lot in this video, but the, another reason that, um, to be real honest, why I think it, it was okay for me to build this deck is because, um, I mean, there's quite, I, I've, I felt like I've grown close to a lot of you guys because I've traded comments or messages or ideas with you guys. And Siren is one of those people that has, have been with me for a long time, along with Kaiser Gray RS and Bob Smith and, um, you know, people like that who have, I remember seeing comments on some of my earliest videos. And um, Siren, you know, <laughs> we, we, we've had so many. Um, back and forths about the Jewel Knight archetype. I think the uh, part of the reason that I wanted to play this was just uh, at first, um, just to see if uh, it would work, and just to uh, you know, I, I guess for Siren a, a way to get back at me because now I'm actually playing this deck pretty consistently. Um, but um, to, but I, I can't, I couldn't be happier with this deck. I mean, it to me, it makes. It gives Royal Paladins what I always wanted for them when I was... Because my first two decks in the game was Kyger and Royal Paladin. And Royal Paladin just fell off the map when Barkle left. And Majesty brought a sum back, and then they just went away forever. And um, this, to me, brings Royal Paladins all the way back into the picture. I mean, in my honest opinion, um, the top two decks right now, in my opinion, are the Cross and this. Um, or variants like this. Um... And Sword Me is half the reason, if not 75% of the reason, um, you know, along with the, a broken stride like St. Blow. Um, but, you know, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you guys would like to see a more budget-friendly version of this deck, I might be able to work that out. Because if you do want to play this deck, it is... I mean, Sing Saver has gone up in price. Even the regular ones are back up to like $25 just because of how popular this deck has become. Um, but uh, Saint Blow is hovering around $20 to $25. Um, Sing Saver is hovering around $20 to $25. Sword Swordme can go as low as $25, high as $35, $40. Um, so this deck is quite expensive. But if you wanted to build a, a, uh, a cheaper version of this deck, you can play... Altamile Sing Saver and not use the Jewel Knight engine and just use all the new support and you'll probably do just fine because um, that's what I was doing with the deck um, before I decided to try this and figure my my uh, re another reason behind this was I t told myself well if I don't like the Sword Me the Sword Me engine I can just sell the Sword Me engine at Team League and make a lot of money <laughs> so um, that that was also part of the reason that I did it because you know I, I'm all for making money so anyway. Um, I hope I covered everything. I hope um, everybody is happy with this deck profile. Um, I tried to make this one of the better deck profiles that I've ever done because I wanted it to be good for Siren because I wanted her. I wanted mainly her since she's the person that I've always poked fun at with the Jewel Knights because I wanted her to. 
I wanted her, I wanted um, anybody, not just Siren, I guess, but I wanted anybody who is a Jewel Knight supporter um, who might have been just a little ticked with me for never, for always talking bad about them. I wanted them to go, you know, I wanted to show them the respect and say, this, in my opinion, is the best way the Jewel Knights can work, is they're not, is they function well with other stuff and make that deck even better. And I think that's what Jewel Knight's strength is. So I hope I make all Jewel Knight fans proud, <laughs> and I hope maybe you're not as mad at me, but um, I hope I hope you, if you're a Jewel Knight supporter like Siren, diehard Jewel Knight fan like her, that you guys um, enjoyed this, and I hope I did it right. So anyway, guys, thank you very, very much for all your continued support. It means so much to me, guys. So anyway, thank you very much, guys. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, leave your feedback. If you have questions about the deck or suggestions, I'm always open to those, so please feel free to put them down below. So thank you very much again, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up this video, and I will see you guys next time.